All right, you lovely people. Good evening. Good afternoon. Good morning. Welcome back to your regularly scheduled RSF1 programming. Ladies and gentlemen, we return. We're heading down to the Portimao International Auto Drive. Uh, you know what? I don't know the name and it doesn't even matter. We're here to watch 20. That's right, a full grid of sexy, sexy drivers. Try not to snap each other's cars in half. That's what you're here for. Three qualifying sessions as per usual. And then we will jump into our 50% race. All the names you would usually expect today. Bar Jake, gone again for another, uh, another race. So we'll see how that goes. XDG Mando and uh, Aaron both serving qualifying bands today, so we will not see them whatsoever around the track. Welcome in, everybody. Hope you're doing well. I am certainly excited for yet another fantastic day of racing. Who's on comms? Me. How you see? Mr. Mando, I would adore you to tell me exactly what the weather is doing, please. That would that would be class. That'd be very great. I feel like I can very, very faintly hear the cars, but not properly, which is not great. Um, yes, no, please do inform me. Would very much like to know. Um, what is going on there? Uh, I, I, I can't hear. We have no audio today. Ow. Oh. Thought Kabuki got uh, disqualified there. Uh, dry quality, dry to start, with downpour of rain near the end. Oh, yes. Mando, that is absolutely fantastic news. Thank you very much for providing that. I appreciate it. Um, why can't I hear the... Uh, is the is the game audio coming through on stream? You can let me know if it's coming through on stream. I appreciate that. Uh, I'm I'm fairly certain that it is. Um, and it's just me who's not hearing it. It is okay. All right. Um, I guess I'll be sitting here in silence then <laughs> for the whole race because uh, I can't hear it at all. Yes, Aaron, I'm going to send you an invite. Um, and Mando, if you would like to, to speak to us as well, please do uh, get yourself involved. Um, we've got two drivers serving qualifying bands today, being uh, Aaron and uh, Mando. So um, we're going we're gonna to chat at least to Aaron pre-race. See if he can hear us. Aaron, let us know if you can hear me. Yeah, I can hear you. How you doing, sir? You've had some very good races recently. How are you feeling about today? I'm not feeling too bad, actually. Oh, confidence. Confidence. Have you really been like practicing? Um, not as much as like other tracks. Like this isn't really my okay. favorite track, so I've kind of been just leaving it. But I feel like it's going to be okay. Like I've noticed that it's going to be wet for this race as well, which isn't really going to help. So. That was that was a rumor I I just received. Yeah, that uh, it's um, going to be wet towards the end. Do, do you think it's going to be more of a wet race throughout, or just towards the end? Mm, don't really know yet, to be honest with you. If it's wet okay. towards the end, then like I've learnt my lesson from like Canada and stuff that I need to actually pet when it gets yeah. wet. So yeah. It'll be interesting to see if people's approaches change compared to the wet races that we've had in uh, yeah. in previous races this season. Um, 
Is the plan, I mean, the plan has always got to be the same uh, as it was at Abu Dhabi for you, right? Set the fastest time and then just run away from everybody. Um, mm -hmm. But assuming that doesn't happen uh, and you end up not starting on pole, um, it seems like everyone else is treating this as a game of survival today. Are you, are you feeling the same or do you think there's a potential for you to make a few moves and, and have a nice race here? Yeah, I'm not feeling too bad about being at the back, to be honest with you. As long as I like stay out of trouble going at night, turn one. So I know that's going to be quite tricky because I've had myself, obviously, I've had quite a lot of spins coming into there. So keeping it, um, keeping it clean is like the key to getting through, obviously. Yeah, I mean that's definitely the approach that we're seeing from uh, drivers in general. Uh, I think is. Uh, yeah, trying to keep it clean is is the is the game plan, which I think is a fair yeah. one. Um, Stars Orphan with a 118.8, the fastest so far, as Timmer invalidates by cutting the corner uh, to start his lap. That's probably this and next, and it is a this and next. So that's not a, a great uh, problem here. We've seen a, a few names pop up recently. A few people join. Um, is there anyone you've got your eye on as as a new championship contender or someone to be battling against? Um, um, outside of the, the usuals? Not at the moment. Okay. Um, obviously, LC, LCFC days is quite good, I've noticed, so he's yes. quite up there, I'd say. Yeah, Timo, another recent addition. James, fairly mm, recent yeah. as well. Yeah, James uh, is good as well. Nice. Yeah, got to be people on your radar. Dave actually setting a, uh, a lap here on on mediums. Yes, Adam Moore, um, someone who's joined very recently, uh, currently sitting P2 with a 119, 175. Yeah, we had a so, in that front, um, two weeks ago. Yeah, um, a really, really good race um, as well. Very, very enjoyable to watch. Uh, we obviously <laughs> had our break week last week that, um, well, wasn't as clean as normal, um, mm -hmm. but Division 5 taking a clear win there, uh, just the dominant uh, team. Uh, as a whole. Dave is going to come across the line here on those mediums, see where he's going to line up. Uh, P6 uh, for LCFC Dave, beating uh, uh, Alves and Liam by a few tenths there. Should be enough to get him into Q2 as well, which I'm sure he'll be quite pleased about. Immortal is on a uh, on an outlap, also on the mediums. Quite a few drivers on the mediums uh, here, actually. Um, you are... I, I think it's fair to say... Uh, Aaron, that you have uh, been carrying Mercedes uh, so far this season. Um, how do you feel about Constructors' Championship hopes? Are you just not worried at all? Um, just focusing on your own or hoping... Yeah, uh, I'm kind of just, just running my own race, really. Like, I'm not really fussed about the championship or anything. Just getting good results is mainly my focus. So. There you go. No, that's, that's, I think that's fair. As you say, focus on your own race and uh, and the results will come one way or the other. Uh, yeah. Definitely uh, definitely respect that. Um, are you looking forward to starting alongside Mando today? Obviously, with both of you getting a qualifying ban, is that going to be an exciting battle for you from, from lap um, one? Yeah, I think it will be because had he not had that qualifying ban, I think he'd be right up there with stars. So it's a bit of a relief, I'd say. Yeah, no, I, I, I agree. The gap between the, uh, the McLarens has decreased massively in uh, in recent weeks and which is super excited to see but uh yeah no i think you'll you'll probably have a handful to deal with there but um we'll uh, i'm looking forward to seeing how it plays out at least uh Dabin squad someone new recently uh as well currently on a uh, fast up as we're just watching a mortal cross the line for the first time again on those medium tires beats out uh, Dave on the mediums as well by, uh, by a second and a half there. Also really pushing on those mediums. Breaking into the 119s. It's a hell of a lap from uh, from him. Davin squad coming around the uh, the final very long set of corners. This is a valid lap but they're taking it quite slowly so maybe just making sure they cross the line. Only three drivers to be uh, eliminated um, from here. Any predictions? I mean we always get predictions Aaron. I'm sure you've, you've well, I, I hope you've watched the odd stream and you've uh, you've encountered this. Um, I, I like if I can to get a weird prediction from you, like an exact lap for for a safety car or something like that. Um, but who are you looking at to be on the uh, on the podium or to win today as well? Um, 
I've been speaking to Dave Street and I think he has a good chance here because he's obviously been doing quite a lot of practice and he had that great run at Spa two weeks ago so yeah. he's definitely up there now. And someone who historically is quite good at keeping themselves out of harm's way. Um, which again, it, it seems to be the message uh, for today. Okay, so Days Freak up at the top. Anyone else you you're picking out? You can pick yourself. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna tell yeah. you off for picking yourself. <laughs> um, I'd ho I'm hoping to get up there today. Right, obviously, that's the uh, point. Of that's racing. always the game plan. Yeah. 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 <laughs> um, I think Timo could be up there because he's had quite a good few performances I'd say. Yeah. He's quite a decent driver, so um obviously Dave as well. I'm expecting him to be quite high up as well. Mm -hmm. Give me a weird one then. Um Um A weird one. Just pull something um, random. Guess something random. Pull something random. Uh -huh, um, uh -huh. Liam. Liam what to be on the podium? <laughs> nah, I want I want them to have a good race. He's a good pal of mine, so. Okay. So we're looking at Liam I'm top ten. Do, uh, yeah, yeah. Hoping for points for him today. Points for Liam. All right, that's that's good. I like that. I like that. I will be uh, I'll be keeping an eye, and then I'll I'll hold you to it if he gets into P10 and like mysteriously crashes or something. Um, we'll, and we'll make sure. And for we biscuits to get a good result as well because he's another pal of mine, so. Yeah, if they both got good results, because they deserve it, I think. I will say there is absolutely no one better in this field that av uh, at avoiding danger than Wee Biscuits. Um, some of the performances he's pulled out from simply avoiding cars pointing in the wrong direction. Um, yeah. yeah, phenomenal, amazing awareness. So uh, I'm sure he'll be uh, licking his lips, um, seeing all these messages in, in the chat over the past two weeks and people saying about how they're just going to try and stay alive. Um, th that must be dream material to him. So yeah, good pick as well. I think we'll expect to see him quite far up there too. Right. Well, I, I know you're uh, you're going to be resting on your laurels and not doing much else until these uh, qualifying sessions are done, but I'll let you get away anyway. Um, right. And uh, we'll see you at the rest of this uh, qualifying session. Best of luck for the race. We'll be keeping an eye. And, uh, yeah, hope to see you up the top of the field. Yeah, no bother. Cheers for this. I'll see you guys later on. There we go, then. That is Aaron away. Uh, decently uh, in the championship as Aaron uh, got a uh, a couple of good results. Um, obviously, his uh, his dominant dominant win at uh, Abu Dhabi, his best of the season uh, by a considerable way, but um, snuck a couple uh, decent ones in there as well at various other points. Um, keeping Mercedes in P5 in the championship at the moment. Um, and uh, yeah, best of luck to him for this race. Thank you again, Aaron, for, for speaking to us. I will... Um, Mando, if at some point... Uh, Dano, I would, but as you can see, if you, if you look at the timing tower, uh, I'm unable to. Um, yes, we'll try and get a word with Mando as well, the other driver we have currently serving a qualifying ban, and then maybe we'll try and get one of the uh, the drivers who have been eliminated um, from this qualifying session uh, as well in to have a word. Emotive Carrot managed to set a 120.478, but then a purple sector one on their um, in-lap, according to the uh, the timing uh, or the, the, the mini-map there. That's interesting. Um, I suppose we will... Uh, We'll have to double check that. Um, yeah, uh, <laughs> purple sector one um, on an in lap. Why not? Um, a couple drivers still on the uh, mediums. Dabin squad now uh, switching over to the medium compact tire as well. Uh, they set their best lap at so far on the uh, on the mediums, I believe. Um, and so this will be a follow-up lap for them. DCAT Brick Grit has set a 
banker time on the mediums, uh, which so far has uh, only been good enough for P16. So as things stand, they will be getting eliminated. Timmer retiring uh, in the pits with a 119.972. I think anything in the 119 should be uh, safe to bring you home uh, into Q2. Uh, so probably a, a decent call there from the Red Bull team. Dalling squad starting his uh, fast lap now. Um, still on those medium compound tyres. Currently in P12 with a 120.143. Two tenths should see them safe as uh, Daniel and Wee Biscuits both retiring as well with their 119.4 and 0.2 respectively. Uh, should be safe for this session. Kabuki currently in the pits yet to set a lap time as is Day's Freak, but they are on an out lap. And so we will uh, we will jump on board um, with Day's Freak as soon as uh, Dabbing Squad wraps up this lap and or has a moment. Um, and we'll see what the American is able to do. Finally winning a race. Um, not last time out, but the time before, um, with a, a phenomenal drive. Uh, Adam Moore slicks as well. Uh, retiring, days for a top five finish. Days for top five finish. I, uh, I'll back it. I'll back it. I would put money on that. I would. I would do it. Devin squad out of ERS coming around the final corner, flashing on the uh, on that rear light there. Currently sits P12, stays P12, doesn't improve. So a bit of a wasted lap there from the Williams. We'll see what Day's Freak is able to do um, on their first out lap. And uh, we'll see what Kabuki is able to do as well. Still not out. So that's it for Kabuki. Um, they will not get around to uh, set a time. And so we'll only lose two drivers. DC80 Britgrit is going to be one of them. So Day's Freak in a position here now where it's kill or be killed. Either El Alves will be exiting in Q1 here, or it's going to be the American on your screens right now. He's got fuel as low as he possibly can go. 44% ERS so far, used about half of his allotted amount already on this lap, but it's a big long front straight, which is where he's used most of it, taking that apex. Absolutely lovely, using all of the width on the left-hand side there as well, and running to the curbs on the right too. Purple Sector 2 in the Williams. Now I've got to take these three, four right-handers here. A big sweeping, uh, almost 180-degree corner all the way around. Um, real test to see how much grip and how much faith you have in that car. Up the hill, over the line, Days Freak moves to P2 for the American. Firing way up the timing tower, which does mean indeed that El Alves in the Aston Martin is eliminated from qualifying one, uh, as is Kabuki, DC80, Brick Grit, Aaron, and XDG Mando, the last two both serving qualifying bands. So we never saw them on the circuit, but we didn't expect to either. Wouldn't have uh, thought that was in the plan for Kabuki, really. But uh, yeah, unfortunately, not going to be seeing them um, in uh, in a further session in this uh, well for this race, and we will see them later on, of course. But uh, eliminated from qualifying one.
right, well, there you go. There is your list of qualifiers for uh, oh, to lead us into Q2. Styles Orphan leading the way. The only driver so far to break into the 118s with a 118.828. Oh, what is going on there? Apologies for that. Uh, Days Freak with a 119.102. Uh, and Mr. Adam Moore with a 119.175. Your Five eliminated drivers, uh, as uh, mentioned before, XTG, Mando, and Aaron, both seven qualifying bands. Kabuki, who we did not see, uh, DC80, Brick Grit, and L Alves eliminated by speed. So, into qualifying two now. Uh, not really any names there other than the, um, the ones banned, of course, that we would uh, be surprised, too surprised to see uh, down the bottom of the order. I don't want to sound too rude there to our, uh, our drivers who do a fantastic job. Uh, of course, El Alves has had some good performances, some really good performances um, so far this uh, this year. Nothing to uh, shake a stick at, so uh, I'm, not, uh, I'm not judging. I'm not judging, I promise. I am not. Um, wasn't able to get the speed today, but as uh, Aaron was telling us earlier, um, he doesn't think it is going to be uh, exclusively about um, staying alive today, although that is certainly going to have a part to play. So um, those drivers from the back might still be able to make a difference here, but we, uh, we shouldn't be expecting it, I suppose, um, too early on. I just have no sound, no game sound whatsoever. So I'll need you guys to keep me entertained instead. Right, weird predictions. Come on. Give me some weird ones in chat. That's always what I'm after. On people's opinions. Here we go then, Mr. Adam Moore, going to be the first one in the uh, the session so far to, uh, oh, never mind, round they go, round and round they go. Not the start that he wanted, I'm sure, so we'll jump on board with uh, James instead and get you a, uh, a replay. Oh, that is not the replay. There it is, uh, <laughs> of what happened there to the uh, Alfa Romeo. Just took a little bit too much of the inside there through turn one. Around they go. And that's what these drivers are going to have to be careful of throughout the race today. Very easy to do consistently uh, throughout this race as James is invalidated as well. See what Cryptic behind uh, him is able to do. A fellow Northern Irishman taking a lot of curb on the inside there. Somehow keeps it valid. And I tell you what, at the rate these drivers are going in this session, you may as well finish that lap anyway, because you never know where that might put you in the uh, in the field. Purple Sector 2 for Cryptic. That might be because he's the first one to set a valid time. He's got his teammate in more oh, and around he goes as well. The Ferrari just about making sure he doesn't do a full spin there, but not by much. So that's Cryptic uh, with a uh, an aborted lap as well. Mr. Wee Biscuits, I would love it, but I'd prefer to see you on uh, on pole position. So, you know, you know what it is. Stars Orphan with 119.2 cryptic finish that lap anyway, and, and I respect it. 119.2 uh, for the McLaren uh, of Stars Orphan puts him 
up to provisional pole, of course. But plenty of time left in this. <laughs> I, I'm aiming high. I'm aiming high. Uh, Slicks uh, with a 133.290. Mr. Adam Moore with a 148.289. Again, these drivers just finishing their laps. But to be honest, I think it's the right thing to do. Slicks has actually spun um, off turn one there as well. Um, so a lot of people struggling with grip in this session. And I will... S oh. There's styrofoam flying everywhere from the uh, from the Ferrari behind. I think that might be immortal. Oh, no, it's cryptic. Um, yeah, the, the track temperature must have plummeted, and, and I will say it's a lot cloudier than it was last time out, so perhaps something to be a little bit wary of for these drivers, really testing their, uh, their setups now. Uh, to get a feel for uh, what this track might be like during the race. 118.731, that's a warning shot. If I've ever seen one from Mr. James in the house, moves up to, uh, well, it's not provisional pole, but to move uh, top of the timing tower over uh, Stars Orphan. The Welshman not going to be happy about that, I'm sure, being dethroned Haas. Finally putting together a, uh, a bit of a run now. Oh, as I say that, and Daniel's struggling uh, through the final sector there. Ooh, going very far off. I assume to let the Ferrari by. Um, Haas obviously had a uh, phenomenal uh, race one uh, with a, uh, a grand slam uh, on display from uh, from who? Uh, uh, me. It was me. It was me who did that. Yeah. Um, since then, struggled, but finally uh, collecting it back up. Daniel's had uh, a couple of good performances recently, and James, since debuting uh, in the league, uh, this season has had a, uh, a good run as well. I've just got an old sauce. I did notice quite a few people were using a, a lot of tyres there. Dabin squad has moved up to uh, P6. There is Mando, so let's see if I can uh, get uh, him in. And we'll have a chat with uh, XTG Mando as well. That'll be fun. Alright. Party. Invite to party. There we go. We'll see uh, what he might have to say. We'll see what he's uh, feeling. Uh, like going into this race as well. There's another name we've not actually mentioned so far uh, today. BVB Thor, uh, racing for Alpine, currently down in P11, but on a fast lap. Another driver who uh, can do quite well at avoiding incidents uh, throughout a race. See what they're able to uh, pull off today as well. Purple Sector 2 for the Alpine. Perhaps a, a bit of a blinder here for Thor on the car. There is Mando. Mando, can you hear us? I certainly can. There we go. How are you doing? Yeah, too bad yourself. Very well, very, very well. Um, give us a rundown then. I'll uh, I'll be very open to start with. Um, how are you feeling about today? Uh, it's not my greatest of tracks, um, but I have put in uh, about 40 laps of practice plus about six laps of GP just to see what the car is running like on a heavy fuel load. Mm -hmm. um, it seems to be okay, so I just hope that I can get points from starting at the back. Um, TT times were quite good. Um, GT times on heavy, yeah, sorry, GP times on heavy fuel was okay. Not the best, but we'll see where we get to. All right, so confidence is is pretty high then. Well, I wouldn't say it's pretty high. I'd say <laughs> I've got a little bit of confidence, but you know, starting at the back, we'll just see where we get to and just run my own race from there. Well, at least confidence in yourself rather than confidence in getting a result. Maybe is that is that a fairer way to put it? Yeah. Well, anything can happen, you know. So. <laughs> Exactly, especially in this division, um, especially in this league, but especially in this division, uh, you can find yourself in in ridiculous uh, places as Timmer beats uh, 
Wee Biscuits there to move himself up into P7 just behind his teammate. Uh, another car breaking into the 119s. Um, be interesting to get your point of view then, I suppose. Is 119 seemingly going to be the benchmark here for, for Q3, you reckon, as well? Um, with how these guys are setting up? Oh, yeah, definitely. Late 19s. Um, if you're any slower than that, you've either got to get out again or find some time to improve. We will uh, keep an eye on that then. Dabbing Squad, Days Freak, Liam, Slicks and uh, Cryptic, although we'll ignore the last two because they had a few altercations during their laps. Uh, all currently outside of that uh, 119 benchmark. So we'll see what they're able to do, as is Daniel, who is on a lap at the moment, which I will uh, jump over and watch. Um, how have you felt in recent weeks? Because I, I mentioned earlier, I think the gap between yourself and, uh, and Stars Orphan has closed quite a bit um yeah how have you enjoyed the past few races well it did close up obviously the two victories of mine actually did help um quite a bit but i did miss our last race in spa so i got no points there so the gap has increased again and it probably will do today with the quali ban after what happened in austria but, you know. Well, you, you say the gap widened. Obviously, Stars uh, blew up his car on the safety car. Um, so you only have the sprint to worry about. Um, I, I can't imagine that's been a great help for, uh, for Stars' confidence. Um, obviously, Jake not being here is maybe going to make him feel a little bit happier about his championship hopes. But... Um, if he keeps making mistakes like that, he's going to have a howler. And I think if there's any track to do it, it's going to be this one. Um, the messages, as I've mentioned a couple of times, the messages that have been coming through seem to... Well, it seems like most of the field today think that this is going to be a matter of survival and just getting your car over the finish line. How do you feel about that? Is, is the goal for you to just keep it clean? Well, I'm sort of going to have to if I'm at the back, but... Yeah. Like I said before, the setup I've got, it, it actually sticks to the road pretty well. Um, it's a bit under understeery in some of the corners, but we just have to go from there and just try and keep it clean, not run too wide, you know, out of track limits, and not crash into anyone. It's not really about survival, it's just trying to keep it clean. No, that's fair enough. Uh, obviously, you uh, mentioned to me, as I might have carried across the line, but the 120.4, so at the moment, you are bang on, because a 119.7 is our P10 time, and a 120.1 is our P11 time. Wee Biscuits correctly saying he is in the danger zone. We'll see how that goes. Devon Squad to cross the finish line here to set a, a, a lap as well. Uh, doesn't improve. So 120.2 is where uh, he will say. Um, you were the one that mentioned to me about the, the weather, which is very exciting for me, uh, naturally. Mm -hmm. But um, is that playing into your strategy at all? Obviously, you don't want to give too much away. I'm aware of that. But are you thinking about that? Maybe going on for a longer stint to start with or using up a few sets of softs? How, how's that working for you? Personally, I don't know yet. I always plan to start on the harder tyre. Um, from what I have seen, obviously from other divisions doing commentary, the hard tyre seems to be the way to go off the start. Um, the mediums haven't been lasting that long, they've only been lasting anywhere between 13 and 16 laps. Mm -hmm. So, harder tyre is definitely the way, the way to go. But with this rain coming in, do you want to really start on the harder tyre and in risk going onto the medium and then the rain comes down? Or do you start on the mediums and go to hards just in case the rain isn't that heavy? It's a big choice to make at the minute. Yeah, big improvement there. Just to mention, Davin Squad all the way up to P2, 119 flat. Um, almost the, uh, the third driver today to break into the 118s. Uh, Wee Biscuits now down into, uh, into P11, but setting a lap as is Liam and Slicks. That's you. <laughs> Thank you. I muted on stream, but I couldn't mute for you. My apologies. Um, 
so you're not yeah you don't think you could make the hearts last until the rain then basically we're not going to see that strategy from anyone no rain is meant to come in about half hour into the race so you're probably looking at about lap 20 the hards will last till then but maybe with a few safety cars you could yeah maybe? you could you could well you could get it to last normally that's not an issue but it's to be honest with the rain coming i think i'll start on the mediums and then switch to the hards just in case the rain doesn't really make it down that yeah. hard but we just have to go from there no that's that's fair enough that's that's what you hear from i'm glad to get your insight um i think it's certainly going to be uh interesting hopefully we'll see a good mix of strategies here which is only going to make uh everyone fighting to stay alive that bit more exciting as well um, but uh, yeah as we're kind of coming to the end here of uh, uh, Q2 Liam moving up uh, only to P13 emotive count retired so as Dose Freak is uh, coming around to finish a, uh, a lap oh no he's not gonna like that we biscuits what have you done Dose Freak is gonna I imagine claim that that was an impeding uh, during qualifying, they'll finish this lap. Uh, oh, and it's... Okay, maybe I misread that. Uh, I don't know quite what happened there. But um, yes, Mando, uh, thank you very much for uh, for talking to us. Good luck um, for the race. Uh, hopefully we'll uh, we'll get to talk to you at the end as well. It'll be a hell of a drive, yep. but uh, yeah, be exciting stuff. Um, good luck to you, and uh, yeah, thanks again. Well, just before I go, I'd like to give you a, uh, like a weird prediction. Oh, yes. Sorry. Yes. Yes, please. Tripped it for P3. <laughs> okay. That's that's what I'm after. That is what I'm after. <laughs> Cryptic for P3. Okay, so current podium, we're... Well, no, not current podium, but we're, we've got Days Freak and... Uh, who else? Wee Biscuits in the top 10. Um, Aaron backs himself for a podium. He definitely said that. Cryptic on for a podium as well. Uh, anyone else? Anyone else uh, that you want to put up towards the top, or any you want to you want to agree with Aaron on? Well, uh, I'd say James. For what I've seen, his TTs, um, James would probably get pole, and then I'm going to say Stars for second, and then obviously with Cryptic third. All right. All right. I will. Uh, I will keep an eye on those. And, uh, well, hopefully we'll see you mixing towards the top there as well. But, uh, yeah, best of luck to you. Thank you. Appreciate the reminder as well for the predictions. Um, <laughs> and, I'll, uh, yeah, we'll, uh, we'll see you in a bit. Yeah, no worries. Have a good commentary and I'll see you later. <laughs> Cheers. Thanks very much. There we go then. So Q2 over. James leading the way with a 118.731. Mr. Adam Moore does become the third driver to uh, set a time in amongst the 118s with a 118.828. The five eliminations. Timmer is out. Uh, Wee Biscuits, uh, Slicks, Liam and Emotive Carrot all out as well. Days Freak, I thought, was impeded coming into that final, uh, final big turn there. But... Um, still managed to improve and, uh, and move up into the 119. So that was the cutoff. Um, it was 119.5, I think, was about uh, about the cutoff there. Um, so yes, we will we will have a uh, have a chat uh, with Mr. Biscuits um, as we uh, once we're in this session get a feel for how the track actually is from someone who's been on it. We'll get him to sprint up to the commentary box and then uh, turn around and uh, sprint back down to his car for the uh, before the race starts. I'm just going to jump and double check. We've not had any messages any in the Discord. No, it's just Kabuki uh, struggling uh, with wheel issues. That is, is what happened to Kabuki. So I would recommend to uh, both Aaron and XDG Mando, hopefully they are in here, um, to, uh, to watch out whoever ends up behind Kabuki because, uh, well, we've seen him have some horror starts um, in, uh, in recent weeks and in the, uh, in the five lappers and uh, it's not his fault 
Uh, that is just how it is, unfortunately. He had two shockers at Spa in there, just because he's got wheel issues. Orphan, Timmer, and Thor for top three. They're my guys. Uh, all right. All right. Um, that's solid. That's a solid prediction. We will... Um, there's loads today. I'm loving this. Uh, Frenchie says, well done, Dabin Squad. Yeah, Dabin Squad up in the top 10. Great performance from him so far as well. Um, starting to get to the names we would normally expect to see. Dave, James, um, Adam Moore, all being recent ones, but really uh, hitting their stride here in Division 5. Um, as, is, uh, as is Cryptic. Cryptic in the top 10. That is, uh, that's not one, that's not a name you see very often. So congratulations to him. I know he's been doing a lot of practice uh, um, since Abu Dhabi, I think was his, uh, his last race. He took a couple of weeks off, uh, missed China, I believe, and uh, has just been practicing that crazy. So he had another two weeks off here, uh, or a week, two weeks between races, uh, and has spent that time practicing. So it's good to see. Practice does make perfect. That's what you love, 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 love to see. Uh, right, let's then see if we can get in. Oh, how are we going to do this? Because... Mr. Biscuits is on... Uh... PlayStation? Is he not? Uh, what we could do is... If he's here... Uh, let's see if we can get him involved in uh, Discord instead. As Mr. Adam Moore invalidates there. Um, coming through sector two. Yeah, Discord call. All right, we'll see what we can do here um, to uh, have a have a word. So there goes the, uh, the polystyrene. Absolutely eliminated there. Uh, Wee Biscuits, if you join just the voice channel in RSF1 and then I'll see if I can drag you over into commentary um, unless you can join commentary in which case happy days uh, if that doesn't work I suppose we can use no that's it that's, that's the only option we've got uh, or I can just call you myself um, we'll uh, we'll see what we can uh, see what we can do um, Days Freak setting the fastest time in uh, Q3 uh, there so far, 120.8, uh, then beaten by Cryptic with 120.6, then beaten by Immortal with a 119.512. The uh, Ferrari teammates uh, trading positions there. You know what? Let's just go ahead and call the Biscuits instead. I don't know why I'm messing around with anything different. I'll just give him a, uh, a ring and uh, see if we can get in touch. James with a 118.498. That is ridiculously fast uh, and comfortably uh, on provisional pole now we yet to see a time from the stars orphan but here he goes starting that hot lap we'll see what he is able to do here invalidate so he's not going to do much uh, he's probably just going to nurse this car straight back round into the pit lane unfortunately Does have a bit of fuel, so maybe we'll uh, we'll see something else happen here. Dabbing squad out on track as well, but invalidated, so we're not going to see anything from him just yet. LCFC Dave coming around the final right-hander now. That's a, a corner. We're going to see a lot of people uh, lose it when that rain starts coming down. If we see it, 119.621 for the Red Bull. The Red Bull uh, cars having a real... Well, after they've completely changed their roster around, um, shockingly, have seen a real pickup in performance. Um, thanks to Dave and, uh, and Timmer. Uh, Timmer obviously not had the best of qualifying sessions today, but these anomalies happen. Yes, the call will work. There he is. Hello. How you doing? I'm all right, yeah. Much through this session, to be honest, but... 
Gustav, well, uh, obviously, uh, would have rather seen you still, uh, still in and still, uh, still driving here. But um, yeah, how are you feeling going into today? How has it felt through qualifying there? What's the confidence like? Qualifying, the, the track felt pretty good to be honest. It wasn't really that much spins for me, but on that final run, just had a massive snap coming out of turn four. Okay, well that's good. Um, confidence in the uh, in the setup, I think, is going to be key today. I, I, I've asked the same question to the last two guys. The people watching the stream are going to be fed up of me uh, saying it, but everyone thinks it's going to be a test of survival. Uh, what's your thoughts on that? Are you uh, looking to make some overtakes, get some moves done with some being someone who's in the middle of the pack here, or are you just going to be keeping out of danger? Definitely, I'll go for it at the start because my race starts are tend to be pretty good. Mm -hmm. So if I make a few positions up there, but the thing I'm worried about the most is probably track limits. Quite quite easy to get it at turn one. Okay. But I think confidence is okay. I mean, I am known for having a spin or two in a race, but I'm hoping this time it's different. Well, as I said, I think if anyone on you want to bet on anyone in this uh, lobby to keep themselves out of danger, it's got to be yourself. Um, I think back to. Imola, uh, in particular. Yeah, um, that was a tough one. So I, I, I can see it happening again. Um, Mando seems confident that we're going to see rain uh, towards the last few laps. You've obviously looked at the forecast yourself. Um, is that playing into your strategy at all, or are you just you, you're going to play it as you were and, and, and see what happens? To be honest, the tie wears, like, in the four on multiplayer, the tires were wearing out really quickly. But then I went into another session and they weren't as quick as the other ones. Okay. So it's it's going to be quite difficult to judge what to do. But I think if you can extend, just extend a strategy as much as you want and hope for the rain to come in the final laps, maybe go for a soft stint at the end. Or wait, no, I, no, no, that's stupid. Why would you go in softs in rain? Uh, it turns at the end? Uh, it should be, yeah. Yeah, okay. Um, are you thinking well obviously again don't want to give too much away especially when you're in the middle of the pack uh, yeah. but Mando is expecting the hards to be the, the race tyre here are you yeah. going to go harder and go long yeah um, I'm not too sure to be honest because the mediums are quick but after 10 or so laps they're about 40% Okay. I think it could be I mean the hards won't take long to heat up here so it could might be, it might be a hard start but we have to see what everyone else does. Yeah. No, a hundred percent. James then is uh, is currently leading the way in this session on provisional pole, still with his one eighteen point four nine eight. That that is a scary, scary fast time uh, from the house there. It starts off in P two, and Daniel up in P three. I know he has pace. I've seen it. Um, and he's proven it finally. Adam Moore up there in P4. Uh, Immortal consistently a good qualifier in P5. Cryptic in uh, in P7. As I was saying earlier, that's a name we uh, we don't see very often in the uh, in the top ten. Um, we'll jump into it then. Um, predictions. Give me a weird one. Uh, give me some names you, you're expected to see towards the top today. Well, I mean. It's pretty obvious that James is the the main one so far, uh -huh. but I think <laughs> I think we could see a, a Thor cryptic in Day's podium. Oh, that's that's bold. That is it. That's the boldest. That is out yeah. of everything that me and Silky <laughs> and anyone else has said. That, sorry, let me get that again. Thor cryptic Days on the podium yeah. at the end of this yeah. race. Yeah, Thor's just gone onto a lap as well. At a, oh, as Davin Squad spins out of uh, <laughs> out of turn one there as well. I'm sure we're going to see uh, many of those during the race. Um, I tell you what, if you get that right and that happens, yeah. that will be the single greatest prediction um, any of us <laughs> have uh, have pulled off. Um, that is, yeah, that is certainly something. Um, I, I, that'll work if everyone ahead of them. Um, just has a bit of an incident. Which is possible. Um, I, I don't want to sound like I'm slandering, but 
Stars Orphan has gotten involved in incidents um, yeah. this season. Uh, James did not have um, a good debut at Canada. That went horribly wrong as well. Um, yeah, we had a bit of a collision. So there's, start. yeah, there's plenty that could could happen here and I don't think it's out of the question to see the leaders tangle with each other. Adam Moore's a bit of a wild card and Mortals had incidents as well so uh, I, it's possible. I, I'm definitely not going to bash it and say that it's not going to happen. It is possible. Um, uh, cryptic can be a magnet for these kinds of incidents is the only thing that worries me about that. Yeah. But who knows? Who knows? Ooh, what a lap from Thor. A 118.670 only good enough for P2, but does move him right the way up the tower. Um, beating out Stars Orphan as well, who is currently on a hot lap. In fact, almost all of the drivers now on a hot lap. Bath or a lot of them uh, finishing up. 118.999 for Daniel. He moves up and breaks that barrier. He's going to cross the line here again, but uh, doesn't improve. Uh, so we'll stay in that position. One retirement there from uh, Dabbing Squad uh, as he is done with this session. Immortal is improving by uh, just about two tenths at the moment. Might be good enough to move him up to, uh, to P5 here. We'll see what he can do. Crosses the line. Good enough for P4. Up a row for Immortal. Puts him on, uh, on the second one there alongside uh, Stars Orphan. The two house cars are looking really quick today. Very, very quick. Uh, Daniel is improving again um, here now. So that must have just been maybe like a double uh, outlap there for Daniel um, or aborted early. Dace Freak is uh, just coming around at sector three here. We'll see what he's able to do. I think that said he was improving by almost a second there. Uh, as he comes around the final right-hander, um, as is LCFC Dave, currently on a 119.621. He's going to cross the line. Jay's improves on his provisional Sorry. pole, moves it's, it's up. Standing. Uh, Dave crosses the line, remains in P7, new, moves down now, knocked uh, by Dave's freak. Immortal loses on his uh, second row slot uh, out to Mr. Adam Moore, who improves by a couple tenths. Uh, Daniel crosses the line uh, and knocks him down even further, gets back in front of the Ferrari. That is going to be how they line up. BVB Thor up in uh, in P2. Every single one of those drivers breaking into the 119s there. Great lap from Cryptic. Um, that got very tight at the end. That's very exciting. Yeah. I didn't expect Thor to be so high up. That's no. Like a lap. No, that was a surprise. That came out of nowhere, but uh, great lap. So that is how they will uh, they will line up. James are way out in front, but the 118.248 for him. BB Thor uh, will line up alongside with the 118.67. Then you've got Stars, uh, Mr. Adam Moore, Daniel, Immortal, Days, LCFC Dave, uh, Dabbing Squad, and Cryptic Synapse. Right then, Thor, Cryptic, days that was it right how's the podium yep yep i mean with thor in p2 with thor in p2 yeah. who knows he's carrying helping for me right now <laughs> i mean he's 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 doing you a favor he's he's definitely started yeah. on the right foot all had right a good point last week in spa when me getting fourth and fifth i think it was yeah 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 right. um but it's been difficult with modular Callaway. Yes, it's been a very different uh, season now for Alpine than how they started. Um, but uh, time yet, time yet. We're only halfway through this uh, this season, so it could all change. It's still very close uh, between all the teams. So exciting stuff, right? Well, Aaron, I will uh, I will let you get to it. Um, good luck with the race, um, uh, uh, Aaron. <laughs> biscuits <laughs> sorry apologies uh, okay. uh, his name popped up and that's just what I went for um, good luck uh, hopefully we'll uh, we'll see you towards the top there as well um, but uh, yeah hell of a prediction there mate so yeah. <laughs> we'll see what happens uh, best of luck and yeah thanks very much for talking to us uh, no problem see ya alrighty then so that is us all uh all time. I apologize for calling him the wrong name there at the end uh, just while we wait for the uh, uh the drivers to get readied up they get a short break here in between um there is your standings both driver and constructors mclaren 
certainly starting to run away with the constructors, but after their incident last week and uh, a qualifying ban this week for Mando, maybe potential for Alpine and Haas to close up. Mercedes Williams not far away either. It is very, very surprising that Ferrari are all the way down in seventh, but Cryptic starting in the top 10 today might be able to create some chaos, make something happen for his team. James will be looking to move all the way up from uh, P13, I'm sure, with, uh, with starting on pole position today. I, uh, I can't wait for this one. That was a very close grid. That was one of the closest qualifying sessions we have had in a very, very long time. So... I'm, uh, I'm excited to see, well, it, it's good news for the race, especially if we're going to see rain late on. I love getting rain in Division 5, I can tell you. Um, I absolutely adore it. So hopefully we will see um, a little bit of that later on. I will uh, take a few minutes to, uh, to grab a drink and all sorts as well. I encourage everyone else to do the same. And uh, we will be back in uh, in just a few for uh, the 50% race here in RSF1 Division 5, round 10. All right, you know, I'll always do what I can for these races to have some snacks or something prepared, but I don't today. So we've got no sound. <laughs> we've got no sound. we got no food. We've only got a bit of drink. But it's all right, because we've got you lovely people in chat, and we've got a full 20-man grid down in Division 5 as they line up to go racing. Here in Portugal. Here is a very, very quick look at the tyres that they line up on. Absolutely everyone starting on the mediums apart from Dabin Squad and Cryptic. Uh, disqualifications off the start there for James and Thor, but that doesn't mean anything. But here we go. For the 10th time this season, 
Five red lights. They're out. There's a jump start further back. I'm sure that was a jump start. Or maybe it was just an absolutely phenomenal launch from Stars Orphan. I'm not sure what on earth happened there. Maybe that was some bug with him being the host. They seem to have got through fairly cleanly at the front pack at least. Anyway, there's a couple spins further back. Liam gets a five-second time penalty for a collision with Cryptic further down the field. Stars Orphan has led the way by an absolute mile here so far. There's a spin further back. I'm not sure what's happened. There's carnage. There's cars flying everywhere. Dave Street going right up the inside there of Thor. Cryptic is out, as is Emotive Carrot. There's a full safety car. And my God, there is a massive pileup further down here. Now, I wonder, with the start that we got there, if we might see a bit of a restart. Um, we'll see. Uh, that, was, that was chaos. Anyway, that's that's what I thought as well. Um, I have I have put the point across um, that I would maybe, with the amount of incidents there as well, uh, consider a restart if I was um, <laughs> Mr. <laughs> Mr. Star's orphan. Um, but uh, we will see. We will see. <laughs> I, I'm not sure. I, I didn't really see what happened. There was certainly a, a, a big pile of... Oh, a reset to track, apparently. There was a reset to track in the middle there. Um, hopefully someone gets a clip um, so we'll be able to uh, watch that uh, later on I was not aware of anything but uh, yeah we'll see how the rest of this race plays out Um, not that I saw days, but that doesn't mean anything. Um, I have been, I've been typing. Um, <laughs> the diff, the diff four guys arguing about who is getting the advantage on restart. Uh, I hope you guys enjoyed racing, um, last week. I know I, uh... I certainly enjoyed having a few battles against you, Mr. Pazuzu. Um, of course, uh, someone I've raced against before. Um, it was a good time, and it was a little bit more chaotic uh, and incident-filled than uh, 
than expected, but uh, it was a good laugh, I thought, anyway. Um, does not appear um, that um, we'll be getting a restart here. Um, so we're going to see this uh, played out for the uh, the rest of um, the rest of the laps here. Look how beautiful and cinematic this looks. So safety car is coming in now. Uh, Stars Orphan, who took the lead off the launch here, is going to lead them down to turn one. As James being attacked by his teammate Daniel just behind. Mando ahead of Kabuki. Mando all the way up into P9 further back. In fact, that battle is what we're going to watch, or at least the battle further down the field here, and see if we can avoid some more carnage. There's a car pointing in the wrong direction just ahead uh, of them. Might have been a little bit of a reset to track there as well. There's an Alpine cut in a corner um, quite dramatically. Mando is out further up. Oh, my days. It is all going wrong. So Mando and, uh, and Days are having a collision just coming up the hill there. Oh, my. Yellow flags flying in sector one. No safety car, though, this time. Thank goodness. Oh, my God. Daniel. Uh, Daniel's down in P12. How did that happen? Oh, my Lord. There is so much going on, and I can't keep track of any of it. This is by far already the most chaotic race that we have had this season. Daniel trying to sneak one up the inside of El Alves in the Aston Martin there if he can and he does uh, get ahead. They're going side by side here through the long left-hander uh, and, uh, and sneaks ahead of him. The two Red Bulls battling it out just ahead of Daniel here now. You see if uh, there's any more positions he can pick off. As Timmer gets ahead of uh, Kabuki. And there's going to be a five-car little pack here. Right, making the way down to turn one. We might see them go five wide down into turn one. It feels like that's the kind of thing you should expect with how this race has gone uh, so far. Orphan continuing to lead the way here with James uh, sitting behind in P2. The Red Bull of Timmer just managing uh, to sneak ahead of the uh, the Alpha Tower of Kabuki there uh, ahead. Kabuki's finally got his wheel sorted, it seems. What a dive from Daniel to get ahead of Dabin squad here. He's going to have to stick around Ooh, with him. Nearly loses the car and then nearly gets hit by Dabin squad. Manages to just about recover it. Maybe a switch back. No. Daniel going for the lunge instead. Can he get ahead of the Williams? Not quite. That inside line proving to be the more powerful one, but gets a far better launch on the exit. The right-hander coming up here is going to play advantage. Uh, Daniel here as Dabin squad goes very well wide, holds the position, cuts off uh, Daniel as well. He's not going to be happy about that, I'm sure, as uh, Kabuki's had a spin. The Alpha Tauri now back behind. Look at the speed of Liam. Oh, my days on those soft compound tyres. The grip that he has is just absolutely ludicrous. And he sneaks ahead of Daniel uh, in the Haas there as well, who <laughs> makes more contact and loses more of his front wing because it's just not needed uh, on that Haas, apparently. So things starting to go wrong here for Daniel. Not the, uh, the start that he wanted, I am uh, sure. Nearly gets taken out by uh, by Alves there too. Gonna have to be careful to avoid the uh, Alfa Romeo, and uh, and does so right. Let's see how James is getting on further up the field here, trying to chase down the uh, ever strong Stars Olven. I just love the way they are. Oh, look at that. That is beautiful. Stars Olven leading the way there with uh, with James just behind him. Adam Moore in the uh, Alfa Romeo behind them to make up the podium as well. Then you've got Thor, then Aaron, then Immortal, then Dave, then Timmer, Wee Biscuits, Dabbing Squad, Liam, Alves, DC Eddie Brickrit, Dave Freak, Kabuki, Daniel, and Slicks. Daniel just on his way out of the pit lane, had front wing damage there, which is what he's getting repaired. A few penalties out so far, and a real mix of uh, tyre strategies up ahead, as you can see there as well. And Slicks with another penalty. I think that's two three-second time penalties for Slicks here already um, as we uh, just start lap seven of this race. James setting the fastest uh, lap of the race so far as he continues to hunt the Welshman ahead of him. 
That gap was four tenths on the straight. It's down to two as they make their way through sector one. There's a bit of a straight coming up here. It's not always the best overtaking opportunity, but James is going to have DRS. He's going to have to get a move on here if he wants to get the move done on stars. He's not going to get it done this time. So we'll stick behind that McLaren for just another lap, maybe until they get back onto the front straight away. And should be able to breeze past the McLaren before they get to that deadly uh, seemingly uh, turn one here. And Stars Orphan looking a little bit unsettled. I can see Ooh -hoo -hoo! having to break early for the double right hander there and uh, nearly uh, collected by James as well. We Biscuit starting to catch Daving squad uh, further down the field as well, currently fighting for P9. Uh, and Liam closing up quite rapidly on, uh, on El Alves as well. So a number of uh, positions up for grabs here as they make their way onto the uh, front straight. And it doesn't look like to me that James is going to be able to get this move done. Stars Orphan with 55% ERS and not even using it is in a pretty safe position here. We Biscuit, eight tenths back on Dabin Squad, is going to struggle to uh, get this lap, uh, to get this move done as well, rather. Um, we'll see if anybody else is able to get something. Uh, DC80 Brick Grit gaining quite rapidly here on Liam. He's going to try and swing one up the inside. There was not enough room left, uh, really, for the, uh, the Alfa Romeo to sneak through through there got to be careful of the uh, oncoming Williams there I'm sure that one will be sent to the stewards room bit of a 50 50 a late lunge there from Brick Grit doesn't get too much damage by the looks of things and but does send him tumbling down to P14 in the order Timmer starting to close in on his teammate LCFC Day, who has mentioned before, this is a brand new Red Bull squad. Uh, replacing uh, Bocadion and Liam, who's been relegated to uh, Alpha Tauri by the looks of things. Aaron all the way up in P5 after his qualifying ban, which saw him starting at the back of the grid is all the way up into P5. XTG Mando also had a qualifying ban, saw him uh, get up, I think uh, his highest was P8 uh, before he had his incident. Timmer dropping off. We're seeing a lot of these cars catch in the early stages of these laps and then really struggling through the final sector to stay close. Now, Aaron is catching a Thor here that is uh, is very, very low on ERS. So he might have an opportunity with a drag reduction system enabled as well to make something happen quite soon. Now he has to attack really throughout the course of the lap to make sure that he holds himself well within one second as they come onto the final straightaway. That's where we're going to see most of the moves done throughout this race. But he's hanging in there so far in the uh, in that George Russell Williams. Taking a lot of curb and a little bit of a drift there from the uh, from the Scotsman, but uh, able to keep it fairly tidy as he continues to close in on the Alpine. But again, you see four tenths it was, and that gap opened up to seventh there and, and, and continues. So maybe there's a difference in uh, in setups um, between a lot of these drivers. Some people going for the high downforce, some going for the low, uh, and so far it's favouring the. Um, uh, the high, I think, um, that they're able to pull away through the uh, the final sector as Aaron is now outside of one second um, to Thor. Um, I think the high downforce is seemingly the way to go um, to maintain position so far. James and Stars, very, very close uh, towards the top of the field too.
Yellow flags flying. That's for El Alves, who seems to have had a spin of his own accord through sector two there. I tell you what, there's a real fight going on between Slicks and Daniel further down as well. Slicks managing to get ahead of the uh, of the house. Right, can James get the move done on Stars Orphan this time? <laughs> no. Still, once again, the Welshman is managing to stay ahead uh, so far. Alves with another spin there. Um, oh, no, not Alves, sorry. That's Slicks. That's his teammate who's uh, who's had a spin as well. Stars Orphan is somehow maintaining his P1 uh, fantastically here so far. He's only going to be giving more wear um, to James. They are on an even number of uh, uh, on an even compound of tire um, so far and, and even age as well so they've not pitted uh, yet so far this race 10 laps though on the mediums this is the point where we um uh, 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 drivers who uh, who kindly came in to talk to us um, during qualifying this is the point at which they said we'd start to see a bit of a drop off uh, from these guys so that's one to watch out for uh, we have seen stars being uh, a little bit twitchy maybe the setup not quite there for the mclaren um so far now this uh, corner coming up here this big right hander is going to be where we'll see somewhere and maybe a spin or two if there is any to speak of Again, that was a twitch, but I think that was probably just a, a steering correction uh, there from Stars. Five tenths is about as close as that gap has been coming onto the front straightaway. And it looks like James might see this as an opportunity still. No, not quite close enough. But that red flashing light on the rear of Stars Orphan's car means that he's out of the RS. And as they come around, the left-hander you see ahead of you up the hill, this might scream to James that there's an opportunity here to take the lead off this race. He's not going to use the RS, but he is going to use DRS. See if he can get ahead. Thinking about a bit of a lunge up the inside to force Stars Orphan into making a mistake. He doesn't get the apex at all, but stays ahead and, and continues to push ahead as well here. So James struggling to take the lead from Stars Orphan now. Um, maintaining around this six tenths gap, but not gaining any ERS. And he's having to use a little bit as well to stay in contention. Mr. Adam Moore currently very happy, I'm sure, running his own race on the podium uh, at, at the moment. Sat in P3 for Alfa Romeo. Three and a half tenths, um, sorry, three and a half seconds uh, to the car ahead of him and four to the car behind. I'll make that four on both the uh, both halves now. Um, BVB Thor currently sitting in P4, qualified uh, in uh, 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 in the podium positions, has dropped out now. But Aaron started at the back of the field, now five tenths off uh, Thor um, for uh, P4. Uh, so doing a phenomenal job so far. We'll see if he is able to get the move done on the Alpine. He's got a fair bit of speed um, over Thor, but I don't think he's going to be close enough as they get to the the very sharp right-hander there. Uh, and, and still... Not quite close enough, but here we go. He gets the apex there quite comfortably. He's going to have a much better run than Thor onto this second straight. DRS wide open. He's going to use overtake mode as well. And here goes Aaron. Can the Scotsman get ahead? I don't think he's quite close enough. He's going to look for a switch back. But Thor gets his car planted on the apex perfectly. That's phenomenal defending from Thor. who found himself in quite a dangerous position, or quite a vulnerable position uh, to Aaron behind. And... Uh, Manages to keep his uh, his P4 there. He's defending what is the inside line for the next corner, but becomes the outside line for the one afterwards. And so, Aaron moves ahead. Uh, starting from the back of the field is now all the way up into P4. And he's done it by avoiding incidents, which was, uh, was his game plan. Uh, and he's pulled it off. He knew he had a bit of pace, and he's certainly showing it now as, uh, as well. But plenty of time left for Thor to claw that back. James then, once again, can he get ahead of Stars Orphan? He's not going to be close enough. He's topping out at 200 miles an hour here. It'll be interesting on the next lap to see where Stars Orphan um, is, uh, is going to sit as well because um, I think uh, uh, Stars, sorry, has a slightly higher um, downforce than James does and so he's able to get a lot more uh, traction coming through the final uh, sector um, which is allowing him to pull ahead but I'm not entirely certain about that that maintains his lead through the uh, 
uh, through the second straightaway as well. There we go. Got the words out eventually. Um, rest of your order, as, as mentioned, uh, Adam Moore running his own race at the moment in the uh, third and final podium position. Uh, Aaron now up into P4. Four, Thor in P5, Immortal P6, Dave in P7, Timmer P8, Dubbing Squad P9, We busy it's P10, Dave's Freak P11, El Alves in 12th, uh, Kabuki P13, Daniel in P14, uh, Liam P15 just moving ahead of DC80, Brick Grit who's pitting here for the soft compound tyre which is going to move him down to P17 so it slicks who moves up into P16 for Aston Martin. There you go. There's a 190, 191, 192, 192. Yeah, so it is certainly. So Stars is running a lot higher downforce than James is, as Mr. Adam Moore is going to be the first car to pit. Uh, this is going to be a strategic pit stop from him. So he's done 14 laps on the mediums, now swapping to the hard. LCFC Dave also doing the same, uh, actually pitting onto the medium. So started this race on the mediums, is then swapping back to the, uh, the mediums, uh, and uh, is going to hope, I'm sure, to get a... Uh, get the rain here, pit onto the intermediates, and then the, the rule of using two compounds is null and void. That could be a genius play from LCFC Davey. He certainly has the pace to back it up as well and make something happen. Um, he just uh, he just needs that rain to come within about 15 laps now. That seems to be when it was scheduled. We're only expecting a few laps of wet racing towards the end. We're halfway through now, bar one lap. Um, and this could be some uh, some serious, serious drama late on. James, once again, following stars, but this time pulls into the pit lane. So he's not going to, uh, to be chasing now. So see what Aaron is going to do. 14 laps on the mediums, staying out as well, as is thought. Immortal uh, started this race on the hard. He's the first of the hard tyre runners. Uh, he is staying out. Timmer for Red Bull. So this is where it's going to be an interesting call between Timmer and Dave. Uh, Dave doing the, the, the same tyre compound twice. Is Timmer going to swap for hards? He is indeed. So Timmer playing it safe for Red Bull. Uh, Dave taking the risk. I think that's probably the way that you want to do it. Good teamwork from the pair of them. We'll see where Dave is going to come out here. Um, and if he will be behind his... Uh, uh, teammate he's going to be just about ahead although Kabuki is closing in at a rate of knots now he is yet to pit and he's going to move ahead of Timmer but Timmer is going to get uh, DRS here uh, and that might uh, just be enough to keep him uh, in this fight because he's losing a lot of traction and actually isn't going to get DRS because uh, it's just the one uh, detection point um, no it is two de detection points I'm not sure how he did get that I thought he was close enough um to way, way behind his teammate now by a number of seconds, actually. Right, here we go then. Stars Orphan has led this race from turn one, managed to overtake the two cars ahead of him into the uh, the very sharp right-hander. He's decided to stay out an extra lap, as has Aaron, but Aaron now with a five-second time penalty for speeding in the pit lane. He should get to serve that by the end of the race at least, but not really what he wanted. Stars Orphan went for the overcut, left it late. He's going to be overtaken by Dabin Squad, but he's yet to pit. He's been overtaken by Immortal as well. This is where the fight is going to happen. Can he stay ahead of James? No. James has managed to get ahead of him. And in fact, Wee Biscuit, who is on uh, 15 lap old hards, yet to pit as well, might take these all the way to the wet weather conditions. And now Stars Orphan suddenly has a race on his hands. In fact, he might lose out to Adam Moore here as well, who was behind him too. And Adam Moore is going to move ahead with DRS enabled. He's going to be way ahead of the Welshman coming down into the hairpin here. And Stars Orphan has got the strategy all wrong uh, in the McLaren camp and finds himself losing out two positions. Adam was five seconds back on um, uh, on James uh, ahead of him and another five tenths on uh, on Stars. So the undercut proving to be super, super powerful. And Stars, who was looking twitchy early on, has, uh, has certainly not made the right call there whatsoever. So, yes, written, <laughs> exactly. 
write some notes. The uh, the overcut, not the way to go at Portimao. Uh, James has got that strategy absolutely spot on. He's put a spacer, a traffic spacer between himself and um, and Stars Orphan. And he's even got Adam Moore for backup as well. So James in a very, very strong position here now. So we Biscuits, um, Dabbing Squad and Immortal all have a decision uh, to make here about when uh, to pit. Um, because they could see these out until the rain starts to fall. Now, we don't know when that's going to be. It could be late on. Um, it could be slightly earlier. It could be that they're losing a lot of time before that happens. There's every possibility here that they swap into a, uh, a soft uh, compound um, in the meantime. Um, see those out or maybe pit onto the mediums here quite soon as well. But we shall see. I love a race with a mix of strategies. That's what I'm here for. Kabuki um, all the way down in uh, P11 on mediums yet to pit as well. So he uh, is going to need to be looking at that very, very soon. I'm sure he's not going to take those mediums until the rain. Surely, surely not. Uh, the Alvatari had a couple spins uh, so far in this session, but that would be a, uh, a hell of a job if he's going to take that. It's not going to happen, is it? It's not going to happen. Surely not. Uh, Immortal looking for a bit of a mixed uh, strategy uh, or an alternate strategy result here. Deciding to pit, so he's not seeing those hards out until the rain. Dabbing Squad is going to stay out. Uh, James... Um, is on fresh hards. That's the fastest lap of the race on uh, on hard tyres there. A 121 from uh, from James. Oh, he is blisteringly fast uh, today. Uh, we biscuits with a three second time penalty for track limit there. Immortal going to tumble way down the field. He's going to lose that to a Red Bull here in a few seconds, I'm sure, as well. Uh, does a good job not to take out Dave there. Yeah, Timmer. Um, Timmer went for the same. Timmer went for the overcut, and he's lost out on two positions as well. Immortal. Oh, what a drive from Immortal. He's, wa <laughs> he's warmed those uh, medium tyres up instantly and, uh, and blitzed Dave there. I'm not sure where he got that drive from whatsoever, uh, but a great move to get back ahead. Thor in between now as well. See, not the start that he was after. Uh, but down in P9 on the hards. Should be able to see those out until the rain. Uh, we are due. Thank you for the raid. I uh, appreciate it. Uh, just to give you a rundown, we are due rain um, towards the last few laps. We reckon probably, well, latest probably around lap 30. Uh, but hopefully earlier than that. So you see a few guys on the left-hand side there um, who are, are yet to pit. Uh, Wee Biscuits being one of them. And, I, I, and we spoke to Wee Biscuits it, during qualifying here. He could see these out until the rain starts to tumble. Uh, and that is what we're here for. Aaron, who uh, is not pitting. I don't know why I thought Aaron was in the pits there. It's Dabbing Squad and Dave's Freak who are in the pits. They started on the uh, the medium compound tyres as well. And it's just coming into the pit lane. Aaron, uh, Aaron Adam is closing up at quite a rate here on uh, on Wee Biscuits, who is on those old tyres. But if he can... Um, if Wee Biscuits can hold him off for a little bit longer so that he has Stars Orphan to worry about, we might be able to, uh, to see something happen there. Daniel and Days Freak battling further down the field there. Days Freak has gone onto the soft compound tyres. If, if there is a man who, whose cojones I admire more than anyone else, it's Days Freak. It's Days Freak. The man has balls of steel and he's proven it once again. Adam Moore is going to go for the overtake here on Wee Biscuits as they make their way down to turn one. He's got DRS. He's got overtake mode firmly enabled as well. He's going to sneak ahead of the Alpine 
as they make their way to the right-hander. Admittedly, he is on much, much fresher tyres. Uh, I just want to see if I can keep an eye on what is going on further down here between uh, Daniel and Days. They are going almost side by side um, through this big right-hander here. Nearly loses the car, does Daniel. DRS enabled, overtake mode enabled, but Days Freak appears to be pushing as well. Oh, surely there's not going to be any tears here as they make their way uh, through the right-hander. They're going to go side by side. Oh, no! Oh, they're both round! They are both around. Contact made between Daniel and Days through turn one there. And you could see it coming from a mile away as well, couldn't you? You could just see it coming from a mile away. And they tumbled down the order. Uh, Daniel, who had to pit early uh, due to a bit of damage. Uh, Days Freak, who was just swapped onto the, uh, the soft tyres. That was like a synchronised ballet pirouetting around uh, as they came through turn one. Rear tyres just tapping each other, sending them flying. Oh, you hate to see it. From two uh, brilliant racers um, so far this season, uh, I'm sure Days will, uh, will have words about that. Daniel does just get involved in these incidents, and it's a real, real shame to see. Um, ah, that is deeply, deeply disappointing. Um, gutted, gutted. Ah, we've got a few drivers who are still here to cause some... Uh, Oh, was it Davin Scott? No, it wasn't Davin Scott. It was Days. Ah, people are telling me wrong. They're feeding me. It, was it not Days? All right, it was Davin Scott. I apologize. And there's too much going on here for me to keep track of. I'm seeing that Immortal is starting to close up on uh, on Aaron here as well. He's on the fresher uh, tires, and he's on a medium compound as well, with Aaron being on the hards. Uh, see, this is why I have you guys here for. This is exactly why. Um... I wouldn't be able to do this uh, if you weren't. Uh, LCFC Dave and Tim are back in their little battery um, in uh, in eighth and ninth. This is where they love to be. There's another spin uh, further down there. That's for Slicks. Uh, they're down in P14. Got the car moving again, though. I'm surprised we've only had one safety car here. But those clouds are getting thick and dark. So hopefully very shortly we'll start to see the rain tumble down here that's going to be for uh for wee biscuits benefit because uh, as he rounds the final turn here he's given up the uh the ability to open drs to stars orphan behind him who is uh, probably sensing quite an easy target ahead here uh, we'll see what this battle comes to uh, between Wee Biscuits and Stars Orphan, both on the uh, the high compound tyres. Wee Biscuits, though, a lot, lot older. 21 laps. He started uh, this race pretty much on that compound. Ended up pitting on uh, on lap one uh, for a fresh set. So. Um, basically as old as they come as no Dave has had a spin his teammate has gotten ahead of him um, they've not lost any more positions uh, thankfully Dave's Freak getting yet another purple lap here um, in uh, RSF1 the, the amount of fastest laps this man has recorded this season is something else uh, I'm sure he's going to hold that uh, barring any major upset there um, especially with the rain seemingly on the way right we biscuits then if he can hold this now to stars orphan he might might be able to see it out for a little bit longer there is a big gap between uh stars and the next closest car uh being aaron um so even if he does lose it it's not the end of the world he's gonna need a miracle to hold on though i can tell you that much in fact before drs is even activated Stars Orphan has moved ahead. Maybe tactical that from Wee Biscuits. He is getting a decent amount of slipstream, in fairness, but uh, it will not be enough. Stars Orphan has used all of his battery power, actually, to get that move done. So, I mean, Wee Biscuits will need an absolute monster of a lap uh, and to pull grip from absolutely nowhere if he wants to get back ahead of the Welshman. But that's not his strategy that's not why he's uh, he's racing um there it is there is the rain you saw it flash up on your screen so with nine laps left to go in this race around portamau the rain is starting to fall and we biscuits who started this race basically on the hard compound tires and he's trying to see them all the way out to the end 
Let's see what he can do. LCFC Dave has played this to perfection as well. Starting on the mediums, pitting again onto the mediums. They're certainly going to need the intermediates at some point in this race. Now, Slicks is currently in the pits, and surely, oh, he is. Slicks has gone for a very, very early change there onto the intermediate tyres. It's not the right time. It's just not the right time. Uh, maybe in a lap, but not right now. Now, Wee Biscuits might be forced to pit here. He's going to stay out. I think that's still the smart move. What can Immortal do? Overtaking is only going to get more difficult here. Surely not. He's had a more pitting already for the intermediates. The speed difference between Immortal and Aaron there is absurd. And the Ferrari is way, way ahead. Adam Moore's gone straight for the intermediate. There is a lot of drivers in for the intermediate tyres here already. In fact, there's going to be a double stack at Red Bull. Oh, Timmy gets in and out fairly fast, to be fair to him, but that is not what Dave wanted at all. Yellow flag's flying. Is that for... Is that for James? Is James around? James has spun. James has spun coming through sector two from the lead of this race. Stars Orphan inherits the lead of this race. How does he do it? He got the strategy all wrong with McLaren. He, he lost out to the lead and dropped all the way down to P3. Uh, behind Adam Moore, behind Wee Biscuits as well uh, for P4, managed to get ahead of both of those cars, and now, after a spin from James, has re-inherited the lead. He's going to come around here very, very slowly. Maybe Wee Biscuits should have pitted, but I tell you what, he's still in P3. He's got a nine-second gap to the next closest car behind him. And every single car here, Aaron has spun. Aaron has spun as well. He's lost out. I'll tell you what, that early pit stop for the Inters was a phenomenal call from Adam Moore, who might take the lead of this race here. He's a way back. I can tell you that much. As Stars gets a five-second penalty for speeding in the pit lane. Oh, it always happens right at the end. You... I, I adore this division and this league. James is going to um, enter his pit box now. He's not out yet. Adam Moore is absolutely blitzing the lot of them and moves all the way up into P1 by a huge margin. James is James has jumped stars in the pit lane despite stars getting a five second penalty for speeding on entry. Wee Biscuits is up into P into P4 and Thor is in P5 chasing them down. What a day out for Alpine if they can keep this as it is. Wee Biscuits does have a bunch of penalties, but that won't matter. LCFC Dave uh, decides uh, to pit again. Um, for whatever reason, and gets a five-second time penalty for it. So he retires. He's done uh, for the day. Mr. Adam Moore with a five-and-a-half-second gap to James now. What a phenomenal start. Um, in this final uh, this final stint. He's going to have to make it last. And I tell you what, it is not going to be easy whatsoever. But if anyone's going to do it, um, Adam Moore might be uh, the man to do the job. We've not seen many wet race specialists so far this season. It, is, uh, it has been a difficult one. Um for these guys. The rain tends to just lead itself to more and more carnage. But there's an opportunity here. We Biscuits, can I claim credit for, for that strategy? I'm not sure, but I'm going to. We Biscuits has made that work uh, absolutely phenomenally. And in a race where we've only seen one safety car, we've seen quite a good amount of strategy here today, which, which you love to see. Um, Thor made the call early, gained quite a few positions as well, has managed to make his way up into P5. And as I said, what a day for Alpine. Um, finally, after they lost Modular Cat, we're seeing a, uh, a big, big uh, haul of points um, if they can make this last. Adam Moore, I tell you what, for a, for a reserve driver... Um, that is a big chunk of points for Alfa Romeo, which might keep them in this championship fight. 
depending on uh, if we see the return of, uh, of Jake anytime soon or not. Stars Orphan is only losing time to uh, to James ahead of him. He's not the uh, the fastest in the wet weather conditions uh, by the looks of things. Now, two seconds back. He did go for what we think anyway um, was a higher downforce setup than his rival in the house uh, and does appear to be gaining a little bit of time um, through this final sector again as we've seen in the past but um, is struggling on the straight certainly and uh, I, I'm not sure that setup is completely paying off he's actually using overtake mode coming through the, uh, <laughs> the speak of the devil um, coming through the uh, the right hander there but uh, not able to gain three second time penalty for James which may seal this win for Adam Moore as long as he keeps it clean which might be easier said than done here he's got to avoid track limits as much as he possibly can now um, the only real battle we're going to see on track is between teammates here Thor and Wee Biscuits but with Biscuits having his uh, his time penalties um, you would hope that we're not going to see too much of a battle between uh, Biscuits and Thor Freak Mr. Day's freak with a, uh, a three-second time penalty as well. That moves him behind uh, Aaron, who, uh, again, served his quality ban and managed to move all the way up uh, to P9. He, that will promote him to P8, uh, as things stand, uh, but no further. Uh, honestly, I think as we, uh, as we uh, toddle on through the last few laps, uh, this race is going to finish um, as you see that field uh, bar the uh, the penalty swaps. Um, but it's been a, bit, a been a real mix today. It's been a cerebral race. Uh, one where the drivers have really had to think about what is the next best move. And as the rain started to tumble, some made the call early. Uh, Adam Moore there's the uh, the first uh, to pit onto the intermediate tires and it turned out to be the perfect call uh, he jumped james he jumped stars james actually managed to jump uh rival stars orphan as well which uh, should see him on for a, a p2 here indeed it will stars orphan has his five second time penalty uh, which will drop him right down the order there is a chance there is a chance here and in fact what I will do in the meantime is switch to leader. There is a chance that BVB Thor here moves up into a podium position. Now, it's a slim one. Don't get me wrong. It's slim. But that might be the last bit of drama that we get here in round 10 uh, down in Division 5. He's going to need to find about two seconds. Uh, which is definitely going to be tricky, but a mistake or two from Stars Orphan could see that happen. And as these tyres start to get older and older uh, and the grip starts to slip away, we might find an opportunity arise for the Alpine here. And that would be a uh, that would be one of uh, one of three for uh, uh, Cryptic for Cryptic for um, Biscuits even. <laughs> A cryptic was another. Um, Days Freak was another who was involved. No, wasn't involved. He wasn't involved. David Squad was involved in it <laughs> earlier in this race. Start off at two seconds clear of uh, uh, of Thor, as things stand. DCAT Brick Grit. Deciding to retire in the pit lane. He was a lapped car. So I can, I can kind of see why, in fairness. Devon Squad and Daniel looking to swap further down. Timmer and Immortal going side by side here as well. Coming through the hairpin. These two cars very, very close uh, to the back of each other. Uh, it, and, and yes, it did seem like there was a reset to track there. So hopefully there was evidence of that and we can... Uh, get the correct person penalised. Thor 
starting to struggle and lose a little bit of time actually on Stars Orphan. Maybe Stars pushing here to uh, to maintain that position. He's got three laps left to drive here. Is it worth, I wonder, Wee Biscuits pulling over, letting his teammate through, giving him the clean air to work with? Or is he carving a bit of a dry line for his, uh, his co-Alpine driver there to follow? The gap between them, just about a second now, which is uh, as small as it's been so far. Biscuits with that three-second time penalty is going to lose out regardless here. So I wonder if... Uh, Thor is would prefer to get past. Maybe try and hunt down the uh, the remaining uh, few seconds of gap there, and he needs to get past Stars Orphan with that five second time penalty to to get a podium, another podium for Alpine here. Timmer has uh, has just pulled super super far ahead. Of, uh, of Immortal now. Now Daniel starting to chase down dubbing squad. Not able to get a move done this time as they make their way through the hairpin. No DRS obviously to play with now. We're in these wet conditions. It's disabled uh, by race control. So fewer opportunity than normal to try and catch up as Aaron is, uh, is causing yellow flags ahead. He's dropped off at the rear of Day's Freak. But uh, Daniel gaining um, all the way through here. Definitely more grip in that Haas than there is in the Williams. Maybe an opportunity here to score a, a singular point um, for his team while James is, uh, is right the way at the top of the field there in P2. Final turn now. All the way around this big right-hander. Track just as wet as it has been. No sign of anything letting up here. Two laps to go for these drivers. Mr. Adam Moore, who uh, didn't lead this race until after the pit stops. But has snuck his way up there with a phenomenal drive, just keeping it clean. Keeping it tidy as much as he can. Thor needing to find three seconds if he wants to get past Stars Orphan with only two laps left to go now he's just going to have to pray for a mistake from the Welshman the championship leader and you don't lead a championship by making too many mistakes he made a, a colossal one last time out at, uh, at Spa in the main race collided with the safety car but it's a rare one you don't see many from Stars Orphan it doesn't look like we'll see one today Daniel and Davin squad both closing up quite rapidly here on Aaron. Oh, they're very, very close. Daniel with his front nose almost inside Davin squad's gearbox there. Helping him drop down to second gear to make it through that, uh, that sharp left-hander. Bit of a speed difference now as they make their way onto the straight. Overtake mode firmly enabled here for Daniel. It's the final lap. This might be his final chance to get it done. Looking for a bit of a switchback, maybe. Not going to get it done there. He's got to stay very close to the rear of the Williams now as they make their way through the first couple right-handers here. It's going to switch to a left. Then you get the last straight. This is going to be Daniel's last opportunity if he wants to get this move done to get past Dabin squad and move up into P10. Score a point in the championship here. He's not going to be close enough. He's not going to look for a lunge either. So maybe, maybe he can hang it around the outside into uh, into the first turn. Uh, oh, sorry, across the line as they make their way uh, onto the final straight. But we will jump back all the way up to the top of the field as Mr. Adam Moore crosses the line and wins with an absolutely stonking drive for Alfa Romeo. James in P2. Stars Orphan P3. I mean, strategy perfection for Adam Moore. Wee Biscuits crosses the line, loses out to his teammate Thor, but that was expected. Timmer is going to be the next to 
across the line here, fighting off a mortal ahead. He got uh, ahead of him uh, a few laps ago. He's going to maintain that as they both have three seconds of time penalty. So mortal comes home in P7. Days freak with uh, oh, as Davin Squad gets ahead, he's got ahead before they've even got to the uh, the, the corner. They've traded positions. Uh, Daniel got ahead. Davin Squad retakes it, and as they come around the final turn, it's going to stay that way. P9 for Davin Squad. Uh, decent collection of points there for William. Uh, for Williams, uh, Daniel uh, moving up into P10 loses out though to Aaron who didn't have any penalties. I uh, didn't quite catch exactly what happened further back there. Um, Kabuki into P12, Slicks and Alves um, in P13 and P14 uh, respectively. And Liam will round off our field that finished today in, uh, in P15. Um, what a drive from Mr. Adam Moore to come through and, uh, and, and win there. I mean, as I said multiple times during that broadcast, uh, he was entirely on his own. No worries in the world and has somehow uh, <laughs> managed to come out on top today. Uh, played the uh, the strategy to absolute perfection and uh, I'm sure he will be over the moon with that. We will try and get as many of, uh, of our podium sitters as we can uh, in to have a chat with us um, in just a few moments' time. Um, see if we can get Stars in first. Have a, a discussion with him here and uh, yeah, get the run down. But great race there. Uh, I can always love the, uh, the rain coming in uh, late to... Uh, to make some drama happen. Uh, that's what we're that's what we're here for. Right. We will uh, we will wait for him. Stars Orphan. Are you there? Hello. Can you hear us? Yeah, I can hear you. Oh, you are <laughs> I, I know I, I've got you. I've got you on the stream. You're um I can't say that you're going to be a happy man. I can't see it, but uh, give us your thoughts. How did that? Uh, how did that race uh, go for you? Yeah, yeah. I, was, I didn't know the pace of James. He was too fast, way too fast. Um, I tried my best to hold him up as much as possible at the first stint. And uh, but yeah, like I say, he's way too fast. And uh, I got a bit screwed in the pits. Uh, I put the pit limit on and. Dropped down, and then some strange reason it gave me five seconds. And then, as I was coming out of the pits, they held me for people coming in, and yeah, got screwed. Really. But, I mean, uh, well, you can't really get much worse than that. Not only did you get the speeding penalty, but you also ended up behind your uh, your rival for the race as well. Um, yeah. yeah. An unfortunate set of circumstances. How did you feel throughout the race? We we were noticing you were looking a little bit twitchy early on, even as early as, as lap eight. Um, you were still feeling confident in the car? No issues? Just, yeah? Oh, it was more the pressure I was under from James, really. If I was, like, out in front on my own, I would have been all right. But uh, James put me under so much pressure into coming into the main straight, I had to use a lot of ERS to stay ahead of him, and he was so good in sector one that uh, I could uh, just about cover him. And then, uh, But uh, I got to the pit stops. I was surprised he didn't get me um, about two laps before the pit stops. Um, I think he had a bad exit coming out of the last corner, and uh, otherwise he would have had me because I literally had about 5% ERS or something like that. It, um, yeah, I mean, it was, fortunately, it was just the strategy there that uh, I think uh, cost you. It was a great race. Uh, you put in a great drive and uh, hopefully we'll see the same next time out. You're obviously still moving ahead in the championship, continuing to pull away from uh, from Day's Freak. So um, congratulations on that. It's another podium at least, but uh, yeah, maybe we'll see you on the top step next week. Well, I'll try my best. <laughs> congratulations to uh, the top two, by the way. All right. Thank you. Oh, it's James. Um, talk us through it then. It seemed like um, you were you were maybe struggling to get ahead of uh, uh, of stars for a little bit. Difference in setups, maybe. 
Um, you were using the RS, but but not able to quite get close enough. Um, how did that first stint go for you? How did you feel? It was a good first step, really. It's just, uh, I don't know how he kept ahead of me so, uh, for so long. I, trying and trying and trying. It's just, I think I kept getting a slightly worse exit out of the fr- final couple of corners and I'd give him an extra couple of attempts on me. And it'd be hard to get those couple of attempts back. Yeah, it, good first stint, though. Yeah, I mean, it must have been infuriating, especially as you you proved that you had the pace, absolutely dominating through uh, through qualifying, and then uh, yeah, and then suddenly we're unable to get ahead of him in the race. Uh, not the start you would have wanted. We'll, we'll let that be discussed later about what happened there um, between yeah, everybody. Weird on that one. Um, the rain flashed. You stayed out. Um, did you think it was going to be a couple laps until it, it got to those conditions, or, or, or how did you feel when the rain started coming? Well, when the rain started, I thought that's not too bad. And I was like, it's a bit. I, I know it was going to get worse, but I wasn't sure how quickly it was going to get worse. Yeah. And then as I got onto the main street, just passing like the pit entry, the RS went. And I was like, right, I should have pitted. Yeah. <laughs> Never mind. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it became. Uh, it became shockingly clear uh well it became clear shockingly quick i should say that um yeah should have uh should have pitted but uh there were plenty of others that didn't um how do you feel uh going into the race next week because you've proven once again you've got the pace there and that was a much better race than you've had in previous ones yeah how do you feel for the uh, the upcoming races as long as i can keep the consistency there i think i'm good because i think i need i need had the one time penalty here and then I think I had one extra warning I thought if I can keep that consistency and not get the penalties like I have been doing in the past I think I could be up there in like big points hopefully anyway Oh, and another track next time out that is notoriously difficult for um, overtaking. So if you can pull off another qualifying performance like that um, at the Hungaro ring, I'm sure you'll have uh, you'll have no issues with uh, with being up towards the top and, and another podium in the bag. Uh, congratulations! Uh, I'm sure you would have liked to have been on the top step before. Oh, big uh, time, big time. <laughs> but uh, a great race, um, regardless. And yeah, yeah, congratulations on the uh, on the P2. Cheers. Right, let's talk to a man who I don't think was on anyone's predictions. Um, Hello. Adam, an inspired choice to pit when you did. Um, yeah. yeah. Talk us through it. Talk us through it. Well, I noticed a few spots come in. And then I think it was the final three corners. I was just, I was sliding everywhere. Yeah. So I made the call just then and... Well, it seemed to have worked out quite well for me. <laughs> I think that's fair to say. I mean, you I, I mentioned it several times when we were, were we were watching. Um you were running completely your own race. Um they were they were yes. 5 yeah. seconds ahead of you, 5 seconds behind you. Uh that's probably played into your hands quite well um when it came to uh came to the pit stops the, the fact that you were a decent chunk behind the two leaders there. But um yeah, I mean I, how did you feel at that point? Was that kind of tactical? You were just wanting to ease off um, and just play was, it easy, or yeah? I was just sort of running my own race, keep my keep it clean, no penalties. Yeah. And then I got a penalty in the end for speeding in the pit lane. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> but because I pitted a lap earlier than everyone else, I was able to serve the penalty, get the tyres changed, and still come out ahead. I, and I mean. Two- uh, Towards I've... the end there, I knew that James had a penalty, yep. so I, I didn't need to push that hard, so I just sort of ran it down to the end and took the top step. It was nice. <laughs> I, I've been commentating and watching league racing for years now. I have never seen someone go from as far back to leading as much as that after after a pit stop or after a round of yeah, pit stops. That was, that was uh, I, I've never seen that ever. It was, a it was huge, a huge special. difference. 
yeah, that, that rain just started coming down so early. But um, I mean, building blocks uh, for you, of course, it wasn't the most electric of qualifiers uh, for you, and um, certainly didn't have. Oh, you, you weren't showing as much uh, race pace as some of those guys. But you played the strategy perfectly. Um, how do you feel yeah. going into um, into Hungary next week? Uh, quite good, actually. I do, I do like the track. I'm fairly quick around there. That's great. That's exciting. Uh, this one. This one, I had my car set up. I knew the rain was coming at the end, so okay. I had it. I had I had some more downforce set than probably most of the others. Mm -hmm. which so hoping, well, obviously, maybe hoping for a dry race next time to try and show a bit of yes. bit of race craft dry as well. Race, dry race, and I think I'll be. I, I, I hope to be up there, top four, and then fight for a podium would be nice. That's great. No, I love to see the confidence. And uh, yeah, hopefully we'll be talking to you again this time uh, next week. Congratulations on the win. Thank you very um, much. Bit of a surprise, but well earned. Um, and yeah. Uh, yeah, well done. Thank you very much. And uh, congratulations to Stars and James as well. Thanks, Matt. All right. Well, thank you to everybody. Uh, thank you to everyone for watching. That is us uh, done for today. Uh, round 10 there, uh, Division 5 in RSF1. Um, we will be back at uh, same time next week, 8pm on Tuesday for our race around the Hungaro ring. Um, congratulations uh, to Adam and congratulations on the podium for uh, Stars and James. Um, hopefully um, we'll see them up there as well. Hopefully we'll see you back in chat. It's been my absolute pleasure. My name is uh, Javier C as always uh, and I will see you uh, next week. Good night.